Hello everyone and welcome to the Biblical Bookworm. My name is Elizabeth and today I'll be talking about the book Prayer, the Great Means of Salvation and Perfection by St. Alphonsus Liguori. The book was written in the 18th century but I'm not sure which year exactly. The author, St. Alphonsus, was a Catholic bishop, lawyer and artist. He's a doctor of the Catholic Church. His work, Prayer, the Great Means of Salvation and Perfection, which I'm going to talk about today, is, according to himself, his most important book. In the book, he writes about the importance of prayer, especially mental prayer, and he explains how to pray so as to maximize the chances of your prayer request getting granted. And lastly, he also gives advice for people discerning a vocation. He also explains that grace to pray has been given to everyone. First, St. Alphonsus explains that in order for us to obtain salvation, it is necessary for us to correspond to the grace, so to pray. And he writes that we get some things without prayer, but perseverance only with prayer. And in order to persevere and to be safe, we have to pray for perseverance every day. Because, quote, he who asks it one day obtains it for one day, but if he does not ask it the next day, the next day he will fall. The author also says that we have to pray when we experience a temptation, as well Whoever finds himself assailed by any grievous temptation without doubt since mortally, if he does not have recourse to God in prayer, to ask for assistance to resist it, seeking that otherwise he places himself in a proximate, nay, in a certain occasion of sin. He quotes the Council of Trent where it says, God does not command impossibilities, but by commanding he admonishes you both to do what you can and to ask for that which is beyond your power and by his help enables you to do it. St. Alphonsus quotes St. Teresa who said that he who neglects mental prayer needs not a devil to carry him to hell, but that he brings himself there with his own hands. He explains that he who prays is certainly saved and he who does not pray certainly damned. The author writes that neglecting mental prayer makes it impossible not to sin, and that mental prayer and sin cannot exist together. He writes that we can consider the day lost on which we omit our mental prayer. Then he reminds us of the value of time, quoting St. Bernard, who said that time is a treasure to be found only in this life. And St. Alphonsus also explains that time is a treasure of inestimable value because in every moment of time we can gain an increased grace and eternal glory. St. Alphonsus writes that to pray is better than to read, quote, There is no doubt that spiritual reading and meditation on the eternal truths are very useful things. But, says St. Augustine, it is a much more use to pray. By reading and meditating we learn our duty, but by prayer we obtain the grace to do it. It is better to pray than to read. By reading we know what we ought to do, by prayer we receive what we ask. What is the use of knowing your duty and then not doing it, but to make us more guilty in God's sight? Read and meditate as we like. We shall never satisfy our obligations unless we ask of God the grace to fulfill them. Now we know how important prayer is. The question is, how should we pray? How should we ask? St. Alphonsus quotes St. Thomas, who lists four conditions required in prayer so that it can be effective. These are to ask for oneself, things necessary for salvation, piously, and with perseverance. Regarding praying for oneself, St. Alphonsus explains that contrary to what St. Thomas writes, there are many theologians who believe that we can effectively pray for others, and he adds that he who prays for others will see his prayers heard much sooner. The second condition is to pray for things necessary for salvation, as only those requests will be granted absolutely. It is okay to pray for earthly things as well, but one should always ask for them on the condition that it is not contrary to one's eternal good. St. Alphonsus explains that all attachment, even if it's to good things, except for God, is bad. He quotes St. Augustine, who explains uh, the word of the gospel, whatever ye shall ask in my name. And St. Augustine says that nothing which is asked in a way detrimental to salvation is asked in the name of the Savior. St. Alphonsus also reminds us that we can and should ask for great things, as we see from the Almighty, and uh, by asking great mercies of God, we honor him. The third condition is to pray piously, and that means to pray with confidence and humility. 
Let's start with confidence. St. Alphonsus writes that all human merit is to put one's trust in God. And he also tells us to ask for the grace we want with certainty, because he who will ask for it hesitantly will receive nothing, as God will only hear us unless we are certain of being heard. And regarding humility, it has been said multiple times in the Bible that God doesn't hear the proud. But St. Alphonsus explains that God does hear sinners. But further still, St. Thomas examines this point more minutely and does not hesitate to affirm that even the sinner is hurt if he prays, for though his prayer is not meritorious, yet it has the power of impetration, that is of obtaining what we ask. Therefore, when we pray, says St. Thomas, it is not necessary to be friends of God in order to obtain the grace we ask, for prayer itself renders us his friends. Prayer itself makes us the family of God. The last condition of prayer is to pray with perseverance, as I've said before. For example, when we pray for perseverance itself, we have to ask for it every day, so with perseverance. Also in Matthew 7, 7, it says, Ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. Which shows us the importance to not only pray once, but many times. According to the author, you don't have to kneel when praying. You can also pray while walking, eating, etc. And when it comes to the best time to pray, according to St. Bonaventure, the morning and the evening are the two parts of the day which, ordinarily speaking, are the fittest for meditation. But according to St. Gregory of Nyssa, the morning is the most seasonable time for prayer because, says the saint, when prayer precedes business, sin will not find entrance into the soul. I don't know about you, but I'm not a morning person. I could be a morning person if morning happened around noon. But in all seriousness, I prefer to pray in the evening because then I can tell God about my day and think about what I can do better next time and so on. Maybe tell me in the comments what your preferred prayer time is. And lastly, I'd like to mention that St. Alfonso says that it is more meritorious to thank God once in an affliction than to thank him a thousand times in prosperity. And as St. John Chrysostom teaches, the greatest sign of a virtuous soul is to see it meek in occasions of contradiction. There is also a part of the book dedicated to the choice of a state of life, so vocations. St. Alphonsus explains that refusing to follow one's vocation is not sinful in itself, but it endangers your salvation as your vocation is the easiest way for you to become a saint. The author explains that out of the people who die in a monastery or a convent, only few are damned because those who are not called to religious life aren't able to stay in a religious community until their death. He also writes that if people knew how happy the religious life is, the religious communities would be overcrowded. He lists three means to preserve a vocation, and those are secrecy, prayer, and recollection. With secrecy, he means to not tell your friends or your family when you're thinking about joining a religious community, because they will likely try to persuade you to stay in the world. The only person one should tell about one's wish to enter religious life is a confessor or a spiritual director, so that he can guide you. Then the author talks about the four dispositions required for entering religious life, which are detachment from comforts, detachment from parents, detachment from self-esteem, and detachment from one's own will. He also gives advice on how to preserve purity, namely, through mental prayer, the frequentation of the sacraments, retirement and caution, mortification of the senses, and devotion to the Blessed Virgin. Now let's get to my opinion on the book. I would give the book an 8 out of 10, and I will tell you what I liked and what I didn't like about it. I did like that the book um, does a great job at conveying the important message that prayer is necessary for salvation, and I also found the part about vocations helpful and interesting. The problem with the book was the second part, where St. Alphonsus talks about why it is certain that the grace of prayer was given to all, where he refutes Jansenism. First, this part is very theoretical and, in my opinion, unnecessarily long. And also, Jansenism isn't a thing anymore, so I mean it's not popular anymore. And it feels very unnecessary when you first have to learn the heresies of Jansenism and then hear how they are refuted. For me, it's enough to know that it's a heresy and I don't need to read 200 pages about that. I actually read the book twice because I wasn't sure if my problem understanding the book uh, was maybe because my English was worse back time or maybe my brain had some sort of problem back then. And now I at least know that the book as a whole isn't a problem, but the second part is just hard to understand because it's very theoretical, as I've said. 
So if you're planning to read it, I would honestly recommend you skip part two and then you should be fine. Uh, without that second part, I would have given the book a 9 or even a 9.5. That's been it for today. I hope you liked the video. See you next week. God bless and bye!